Right, so today let's delve into Apple's next generation Mac chip, the M2, which apparently is going into mass production as we speak and could be gearing for a release in July. But also, we have information that maybe this M2 chip could be in the new MacBook Pros instead of the M1X. So let's delve into all of this, but first, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And with that being said, let's just tuck in. So the source of this info is Nikkei Asia Review, who is pretty accurate when it comes to supply chain stuff, and so we can take this information with a lot of credibility. And essentially, in their words, they say the next generation of Mac processors designed by Apple has entered mass production this month and should be gearing for a release in July and apparently will debut with the new MacBook Pros launching in the second half of the year. So the key takeaway is the fact that Apple has already started mass production with these new chips. That basically means the next Macs we see are very, very close, and the fact they give us the July timeframe actually makes a lot of sense because John Prosser in the past has said these new MacBook Pros would launch in the summer to, of course, coincide with the back-to-school promo that Apple has every year, and, of course, July is the month we see that promo, so this really is all starting to line up, and I'm pretty sure we are seeing the new MacBook Pros very, very soon. In fact, what I think will happen is that maybe the MacBook Pros get unveiled at WWDC, and much like the M1 iMac, maybe we see it in June, and then, of course, it won't be available to buy till, of course, a month later in July. I can see that happening. So yeah, I think we are seeing MacBook Pros at WWDC. And yes, I know WWDC is usually a software focused event, but we have seen hardware in the past. For example, the Mac Pro, the iMac Pro, or the MacBook Pros, they were all launched at WWDC. And so Apple having a small segment of the event focused on these new MacBooks does seem pretty plausible. I mean, think about it. WWDC is a developer focused event, those are prosumers who, of course, ideally are going to get the new MacBook Pros. And so it just makes sense that Apple advertises and promotes their new MacBooks on stage when the target demographic is watching. Anyways, let's shift our attention to the M2 chip. And obviously, we do already have some leaked benchmarks and specs, which pretty much details a 12-core CPU with 8 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. And also, we have a 16-core GPU, which might be integrated. And before some people are bummed out that it's not a discrete GPU, I do want to say that Apple could, of course, use a different die for the GPU and give us a multi-chip package. So basically, they give us the performance of a dedicated GPU. But of course, they retain the system on a package, which, of course, is the best part about the M1 and its efficiency. By the way, the base frequency of the M1X should be the same as the M1 at 3.2 GHz. And so basically, much like the leaked benchmarks show, there really won't be any difference in the single core, but there will be a drastic improvement with the multi-core because, of course, you have the much more powerful GPU and, of course, more Firestorm cores. And so basically, on the whole, you should see an improvement of around 100% over the M1 in terms of multi-core performance. So this is gonna be a beast and I can't wait for Apple to present this on stage and flex those huge numbers. Now, traditionally, the 16-inch has been more powerful than the smaller MacBook Pro, and so it's very likely that we could either see more cores on the 16-inch. In fact, Mark Gurman did say they were testing MacBook Pros with up to 16 power cores, which, of course, is twice the number of power cores we have with those alleged specs of the M1X from CPU Monkey. And so, it's very likely to me that maybe the 14-inch gets the 12 core CPU, and then the 16 inch gets the mighty 16 core CPU. It's either that, or maybe we could see a binned GPU on the 14 inch, much like we see with the M1 iMac and the MacBook Air. Or of course, we do see a more powerful GPU with the 16 inch, much like we have right now. Anyways, let's now touch on the name itself, Apple M2. This has got some people confused because we have been hearing about an Apple M1X chip. So what exactly is happening to that? Well, there is one thing to note, and that is Nikka Asia Review is not sure on the name. In fact, they just tentatively dub it as the M2, but really they have no clue what this chip is called. And so what I think is the case is that because this chip is going into the next MacBook Pros, 
And it's very similar to the M1, like those benchmarks showcased, which by the way, John Prosser believes are legit. I basically think this M2 they're referring to is the M1X, and they've simply called it the M2 because M2 instead of M1X is way easier to understand when you're reading an article and you're not very tech savvy. It's basically what we see with the iPhones too, because obviously we are all pretty sure the new iPhones will be the 12S, but of course, calling it the iPhone 13 in YouTube videos and articles obviously helps you guys understand that, hey, this is the new one because 12S could easily be misinterpreted as iPhone 12s. And so basically coming back to the Apple Silicon chips, I think that the X variants will be for the more powerful machines and the basic number variants like the M1 will be for the entry level machines and tablets now. So the successor to the M1, which will be the M2, will not be in the higher end MacBook Pros. Instead, it will be in the next generation MacBook Air, the base MacBook Pro, possibly the next generation base 24 inch iMac, and of course the base Mac mini. However, one argument I've seen is that maybe Apple is thinking of getting rid of the X and Z suffix that they have used in the past simply because going up by one is way easier to understand. For an average Joe, instead of adding X and Z and all kinds of different letters to the same number. In fact, the iPad Pro got the M1 instead of the A14X that a lot of us were expecting and so maybe Apple's decided that, hey, let's not complicate the naming scheme and let's keep it pretty simple like we do with the iPhones and just stick to the numbers and go up by one every year. So yes, if that is true, then maybe we could see the 14 inch, 16 inch, and of course the 32 inch iMac get the M2 chip. And then of course M1 stays on the entry level models for the time being. But you see, there is an issue with that, and of course, that is, with the Mac Pro and higher-end variants of the iMac, it makes no sense to me that Apple has the M2 in those machines too, and so maybe Apple will have a new name for those, maybe the P1 for Pro-end machines, I guess that could make sense. We'll just have to wait and see. But let me know in the comments below, what are your predictions on the whole naming scheme for these M-series chips? Do you think we're seeing an M1X? Do you think we're seeing an M2? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video in the iCard above about some launch dates for the new iPad Pro. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.